Hello, Haley Hollander here, co-founder of Advanced Training Performance and faculty member for PTA Global. And welcome to beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. You are in Red Rock National Park. With, with the current research that's coming out with myofascial tissue, I think it's important for fitness professionals to understand how it works, what it means, and how we can apply it to our training. And specifically, we can utilize all different kinds of tools in our environment to enhance the upregulation of the myofascial tissue and not only affect movement, but also to affect posture. Specifically, I'm going to talk to you about the spiral line. And the spiral line coming from Thomas W. Meyer's book, Anatomy Trains, one of the 12 lines that you'll find in that book. Now, what's unique about the spiral line is that it double wraps the body, allowing us to rotate and keeping us in upright positions as we move. It facilitates and moves with the superficial back line, superficial front line, and the lateral line in an integral way. But what's really cool about the, sp the spiral line is that we can, load, we can teach the body to load and unload it in those rotational movements by tweaking the beginning position and by tweaking the force vectors that we place upon it. Now the spiral line begins at the back of the head in the cervicus and, and splenius capitis. As it comes down, it crosses into the opposite side rhomboid as it comes underneath the scapula into the rib cage in through the serratus anterior. As it comes then around through the external obliques, it crosses the midline of the body into the opposite side internal oblique, continuing down towards the hip. As it hits the hip, it comes in through the tensor fascia latte, through the anterior lateral portion of the iliotibial tract. As it comes to the knee, it goes into the tibialis anterior. What's so great about that, as it comes towards the foot, it hooks the foot into this nice little saddle just as if you were in stirrups on a horse. As it comes around the medial portion of the foot, it comes back up and through the peroneus on the lateral side of the leg. As it comes back up the leg, it crosses up through the, the bicep femoris and the hamstring, crosses the sacro tuberous ligament of the spine, and it continues up the erector spinae. So when it comes to our spiral line in movement, and fascia in particular, what we know in order to upregulate the tissue is that we must respond, we must help it to respond. And in order to do that, we must make our movements slow, subtle, rhythmical, and small. We start to move in planes in different planes of motions that will twist and lengthen that fascial tissue. And once we do that, and we've warmed up the tissue and we've done that, we can then start to add forces, including weight or load, and then we can change the vector or the pull that's on the body. What I'm going to use is I'm going to use three of the most popular tools in the fitness industry that we as fitness professionals use on a daily basis. The TRX suspension trainer, the Viper, and the RIP trainer. And I'm going to show you a mobilizer or a movement that we can do to upregulate the tissues to get it warmed up. And then I'm going to show you how we can use that same tool to load the body and get a different response within the spiral line. Now what's great about the spiral line and that it, it starts at the back of the head is that I can basically upregulate it just by turning my head and using my head as a driver to begin to lengthen the tissue. And then we know, hey, there's a point of contact with the ground. So I can also change the beginning position of my feet to upregulate that part of the line as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand in an L, X, I position with the foot internally rotated so that I can lengthen through that perineal of the right leg. I'm going to have the viper out in front of me and I'm just going to begin by turning the head to the left from here and this starts to upregulate that spiral line. Now once I turn the head to the left, I can then begin to rotate my trunk to the left as well, loading through that external and internal oblique of the spiral line, making sure to keep the knees nice and soft. As I do this, I can feel my right foot pronating and lengthening through that lateral side of my lower leg. Now what I can do is I can begin to add hip flexion into the movement, because if you recall, as you come up the back of the leg, that bicep femoris and the erector spinae are involved in the spiral line as well. 
So as I add hip flexion, the Viper becomes a driver and it's taking me over into that rotated position and loading the line. Now let's say I wanted to add load. Now I can utilize the different grip and hand positions on the Viper. This being a neutral grip, obviously the closer that I grab, the less weight or the less load that's pulling away from my body. So from here I can again begin in that LXI position and I can facilitate the movement now with load, working on strength and driving that right hand across the body, bending into the knees. If I want to make this movement a little more challenging, add more weight, change the vector, change the point of application, the line of pull, I can change my grip on the Viper itself and now I have a longer lever driving away from the body and facilitating that load in the back of the spiral line. The next thing I could do is I could change the elevation of my rotation with the Viper and, and I'm going to do this by not only rotating but I'm going to get hip flexion and then extension through the movement. And if you, if you recall that rhomboid being part of the line as well as the head as a driver, I'm going to stand in L, X, and I. I'm going to take the Viper in my right hand. As I bend down and reach the Viper across, I'm going to come up, twisting the Viper and loading the back of the other side of the line. So now, I'm fighting the forces of gravity and controlling a longer lever of the Viper, making this movement quite challenging. So now using the RIP trainer to create a mobilizer and upregulate the spiral line, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand and face the anchor. Now with the RIP trainer, it's creating an asymmetrical load in the body, so I'm already resisting rotation. And with rotation being the main movement of the spiral line, I'm loading it slightly. So I'm going to go ahead and take a wide grip and all I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my knees nice and soft and I'm going to internally rotate my feet so that I'm preloading the, the spiral line from the ground up. Then from here, I'm going to take my head and use it as a driver from right to left. And if I want to increase my range of motion, I can begin to rotate through my trunk and my ribcage as well. Still resisting the bar from rotating. Now I can add force into the application. So I'm going to stand sideways to the anchor and I'm going to preload the spiral line starting from the left side that comes under the serratus and crosses down into my right hip. I'm going to stand in LXI and I'm going to take the end of the rib trainer from here I'm going to pull it towards me, grabbing the rib trainer and twisting across. Reach across, pull it towards me, and twist out. Now, using the TRX suspension trainer as my tool, I'm going to show you how we can manipulate the spiral line in a mobilizer to help to upregulate the tissue. I'm going to stand sideways to the anchor and I'm going to take my outside hand, or my hand that's furthest away, and place it into the bottom of the foot cradles. I'm going to take my feet into LXI, so my left foot is forward and both feet are internally rotated again to upregulate the spiral line from the ground up. From here, I'm going to rotate my head and my torso towards my anchor, floating through the back of that rhomboid on the left side, and coming up and around, reaching my right arm as a driver and keeping my knee soft throughout the movement. Strength exercise, I'm going to do the TRX twist. Now, once I do, when I do the twist, all I'm doing is I'm changing my vector so that I increase my body weight into the suspension trainer. And the steeper I place my feet or closer I put my feet towards the anchor, the more load I have in the body. I'm going to be pivoting through the balls of my feet, which will now is going to lengthen the tibialis as I turn posterior to the anchor. I'm going to start with my hands, my chest tight, arms lengthened. From here, I'm going to keep my elbows straight as I rotate up and to the left. 
pivoting through the balls of the feet and loading into that spiral line and slowly coming down underneath my hands, keeping the elbows nice and straight. So once more, the importance of fascia in the body and how to apply it to your exercise is going to dictate what's the goal, what is the goal of your client that you're working with, what is their current posture, and what is their current level of fitness. So play with those tools that you have. Start with slow, subtle movements to upregulate the tissue and do it in ways that will load and unload those lines. Thank you.